And I want to welcome uh, Evan Pritchard back to Moccasin Tracks today. And uh, we're going to continue kind of a topic of discussion that um, we started last month. We, uh, re Evan referred to the Jenga blocks. We're going to talk about the Jenga blocks. And, um, you know, uh, just how far can we stretch the web of life is, is one of the topic questions that came up. And, uh, you know, Evan is known as Grandfather Chipmunk, and um, he referred to these Zoom meetings as the Chipmunk Lodge cast. So I thought that was kind of cute. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much for, you know, joining us here at the Zoom meeting so that we can then share this on the radio uh, with our listeners of Moccasin Tracks. Um, so welcome back. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Always yeah. good to be back. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's just been such an amazing uh, experience with the, all of us being in isolation and making changes in our lives. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to start out just kind of like reflecting on that a little bit and how you are persevering it and dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, uh it's uh, kind of like going on a vision quest. And yeah, you're, you're kind of with other people with Zoom and with phone. And, and then you're also absorbing their problems of the people. And I guess they absorb yours too. And it all helps. So it's kind of a, uh, uh, it's sort of like going back to kindergarten in a way, which is a good thing, right? Because we have to learn our manners and we have to be responsible for our behavior and uh, we can't just do whatever we want to when you're in kindergarten. You know, you can't go outside when you want to when you're kindergarten. And so that's kind of where that age where you develop your, uh, you know, your love and respect for others, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, my son, when he was very, even younger than five, he went to the it was Rose Hill Manor Academy for the tiny people. And uh, there was a Nicole woman who owned and ran it. And she was very particular and used, I would say, kind of like our way of the heron teaching in a way, but very, uh, fairly strictly. And the parents turned out, we didn't know that all these great roles that she was, uh, you know, using to encourage respectful behavior. Boy, the parents had to follow those roles, even though they didn't know them, or maybe they had a printout somewhere. And, and that really opened my eyes that like we all could be a whole lot more uh, mindful about our behavior. And so now we're in our, our kindergartens, respective solo kindergartens, and we're, you know, Skyping and phoning each other. We have to be, you know, very respectful. Yeah. Oh, indeed. It is this digital age and it does come back to you pretty quick uh, with yeah. people responding on social media and not always in a good way and and right. how, and how do, and how do you do that um and uh, i particularly am concerned about uh the treatment of women because it continues to um right, right. you know play out in kind of some amazing ways <laughs> yeah but, well i just want to say that you know i res i really want to thank you for uh the way that you have use Facebook to, you know, to send out good energy on my Facebook site and yours. And so, you know, on when putting a lot on Facebook lately to try to cheer everybody up, right, and give positive messages for no particular, you know, financial gain just to get it out there, right? And, right. and you have been very supportive of that. So I want to thank you. All those uh, little yeah. thumbs up, you know. <laughs> well, you know, when the Standing Rock was happening, there was a woman who was a, a teacher from um, uh, Hawaii that often would say that the Facebook could, could be like sacred Facebook. Use it in, you know, she was encouraging people at that time to use it in a positive way. And I always remember that. And... Um, you know, it is an opportunity to dialogue with people, to reach out and even even contact more people than you would in normal life because they live far away and you don't get to drive, you know, uh, to all these places. And yet here we are together on 
you know, on on Facebook, the wonderful music that you share is is really fun, and the concerts that so many Indigenous uh, musicians are sharing is really inspiring. Um, yeah, Tom yeah. Pacheco is doing one on May twenty fourth. By the way, if anybody can track that down. All right, all right. <laughs> um, you know, I, I wanted to continue with the conversation about um, what happened, you know, one of the questions was, what, and, and symbolizing with the building of the Jenga blocks was what happens when we all work together. And so this is an example of it, you know, working together in a positive way. And, um, you know, and then the overload of the tower. So can we, can we begin a, a conversation and like to hear your um, perspective on on some of that visual that we see when we play with those Jenga blocks and build towers? Well, first of all, you know, there's two models of community building. One is the circle and one is the tower. And people like the tower because they can, if they get afraid, they can climb up to the top and look down at everybody, <laughs> which is, you know, how that works. And the other model is the circle and <laughs> everybody's on the same level. So, but I'd like to start with the flute. Can I start Beautiful. with the flute? Beautiful, yeah. Because the flute evens everything out. Everybody's on the same level. They all hear it directly to their heart. So let me do a little bit of flute, okay? Okay. Re remember that circle model, okay? Well, let me fix the mic. Can you still hear me? Yes. song so how do i get back on the camera here i don't know <laughs> uh, oh no as I, oh here we go oh there you go there yeah no as i as i was playing the flute the end of the flute touched the keyboard <laughs> yeah so what's I, that I, that's yeah. weird i know i was trying to touch people's hearts and end up touching the keyboard you know <laughs> maybe sometimes technology gets in the way right Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> th thank you for that song, Be beautiful. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah. You. Community building, it, it's so important right now and uh, feels so strange sometimes. Um, but I like what you said about the tower and also the circle. And could you talk a little bit more about, about those right. differences? Right, the the circle really is the web of life. It, it's a microcosm. Whatever circle you create, you know, we always try to talk about wisdom circles. There's a book that I had a hand in years ago, Wisdom Circles by Charles Garfield. I've been thinking about him. And, uh, you know, he, he was involved in the uh, Apollo space program, Apollo 11, which the, the one that landed on the moon. And as a young kid, he figured out how to get us from the moon Everyone was worried about getting to the moon. And then they realized, wait a minute, we'll be stuck up there and we can't get back. So this little guy from Brooklyn figured it out. So he became part of the Apollo 11 team. And, he, and you know, Apollo 11 was this tower model, right? You see this rocket and it's this tower and this structure is all very top down and military. And, and it's all, um, you know, very, uh, like I say, like tower like in a sense, it's all building a tower to the heavens, right? And, and people getting along, what his part was, he also helped people work together as a team, which is a more of a circle thing. And so there was this combination. And then, you know, Apollo 11 was successful. And then 
down the road, you know, it all becomes part of the military industrial complex, which is very tower oriented. And then he can kind of turned his back on a lot of that and started becoming very interested in uh, wisdom circles. So the idea of everybody speaking as equals and, you know, really going into detail about expressing what they knew and what they could share. So there's a what I think we need more people like Charles Garfield who understand the tower technology and people who can work in sky you know when skyscrapers I've worked I've actually worked in skyscrapers in Manhattan um, but then to also go back and, and go go to the earth go right to ground to the level you know like ground level and really be able to see things from the grassroots level and to see everybody as equals and uh, as having something you know to share and that's the web of life level where everything is interconnected in a lattice work which is much like how apparently nature if you you know i don't use that word too often but whatever is out there out outside our walls of the tower what is that well there's a certain interconnectedness and in lattice work the natives have always talked about the web that it's like a web and that if you break one strand it affects the whole web and now in, in quantum mechanics the certain theorists are talking about time and space as lattice work that and i think that my current personal understanding is that you know time is moving forward most of the time moving forward and there's all these events all happening simultaneously this way but then there's space you know happening that way whereas time's going this way do you, I hope I'm making myself clear. So it's like a lattice work that's very abstract, but it's uh, a web. And if you were to disrupt time, it would disrupt the space of all those other events. Now that's maybe not what these theorists <laughs> had in mind, but they talk about that web and the last work of time and space, which is one of the main components of reality, right? And quantum reality too. So we say that uh, our native Yorub Mi'kmaq no word for time they don't we do not have a word that's specifically for time we have a word for when and so you can compare events that are happening at the same time and that's an accurate way of describing the quantum model as far as i understand it where what's important is what things are happening at the same time in the lattice work as time is what we call time is moving and and that's when and so that's our that's a word that some people think means time but it absolutely does not it's not the same thing at all because there's certain flexibility in that and so uh that's kind of what the web of life is and so when you're in a circle with people like a wisdom circle then they um they're all there in the same time and space and they affect each other and so their communication comes out um what so i just lost the word uh comes out uh harmoniously maybe that's not the right word but interconnectedly is mm -hmm. what they're saying is congruent there's my word is congruent with everyone else whereas if you're not and you're just speaking through internet and email you know that can go wrong because there could be uh, you could just not be you know where they're coming from and not hear them so to speak so while we're really building a new reality using using emails and using Zoom and not to promote one brand, but Skype, all these different things, we have to be much more careful that if we're building this new reality, that's one that we really want. And uh, so I've been doing a lot of Zoom, but I'm also trying to be very careful about everything, you know, I say that's, you know, respectful. Hopefully it's an effort. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's the first part. But in terms of your question about this Jenga towers, I've, I've been buying Jenga tower kits for people and sending them because, you know, that's one good thing Amazon is for is sending Jenga kits. And so <laughs> I sent them across the country and, and my son did uh, got one and he was having an art party because he's very creative and um, they were socially distancing, but they all painted the Jenga blocks and then they built you know, a Jenga tower. And then of course the next stage is, it would look great, right? The next stage is you pull out one of the three slats at a time, could be at the bottom. And then um, the tower can remain standing for a long time. But what you're doing is you're putting those slats on the top. So the tower is getting taller and taller and taller, 
right? But at the same time, you're pulling out the supports, right? And guess what happens? Out of nowhere, unexpectedly, the tower falls down and, and, and nobody knows who to blame, you see, which is kind of like what's happening in our country. Yeah. Is that everything's falling apart and it's, oh, it's not my fault. I don't know how that happened. It was just out of nowhere, right? Well, you've been pulling out the supports for like since 1970, basically, is when a lot of things started institutionally becoming uh, corrupted, 69 people say. And um, or you could go back to uh, 1609, actually. Um, and these supports keep getting pulled out. And to build the tower higher, since you have limited uh, sphere of resource, you just keep piling it up and you take the resources and the parts out from the bottom. And yeah, eventually it falls apart, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, am I mm -hmm. making sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and visually, I, can, I definitely can visualize um, what's going on when you talk about the circle and each of us being equal. Um, I want to put the animals in there too, you know, and, and mm -hmm. all the other living beings in, in, in that circle with me. Um, because well, I right. Think, that's go ahead. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just, um, I feel like right now we have an opportunity when we, when we are alone and we have, and we can be out, uh, and sitting on the earth and just kind of be listening, we can observe how, how we are connected. And yesterday I was taking a quiet moment and the yellow uh, golden finch came into the yard and I thought, how perfect this bird arrives just when the dandelions are blooming, just when the daffodils are blooming and the yellow tulip there it was right beside the yellow tulip and i thought you know how, how does it know this like they these uh wise beings that are so you know this bird in particular is very small and yet you know it arrives so that it can protect itself amongst the colors that it is you know so i just uh i don't know i had a uh, a, a, a appreciation for being able to see that it was such a gift to be able to see the bird i mean it sounds like really simple or you know but <laughs> well, there's, a, there's another yellow flower that's coming out called gold thread comes out this time of year uh -huh. and the natives oh, yeah. give gold thread it has a stem that's as thin as a thread and the flower is golden colored and and their native elders have been talking about this for hundreds of years. Well, you got to have gold thread, get it when you can, you know, whenever you see it and grow it yourself in a pot or whatever, gold thread. And what happens is there's ways to use it um, that have tremendous, unique medical, uh, you know, properties, including they use it to cure alcoholism as a disease up on the reservation. It's free, by the way. And uh, people have, you know, good results with it in conjunction with having you know shamanic elders and also doctors have just announced that it's very good for blood sugar and diabetes yeah which is no small thing so uh yellow that's another one of those flowers that's coming out at the same time as the goldfinch yeah or the yellow fit yellow finch excuse me. yeah and the yellow finches finches are uh you know the way they talk you know it, it's it's kind of wonderful to listen to yeah yeah you know in code yeah, so this wonderful circle, this wonderful web of life. Uh, let's talk oh, about... Speaking, oh, let me interrupt you for more. a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just, in terms of, well, the book, you know, Bird Medicine, I wrote, it was one of the things I mentioned that I had a chance to really observe, is that in terms of that circle, that finches uh, work in circles. They, if you have like one food source that they like it, or two food sources better, um, and you have like four finches, they will take turns like a volleyball team and everyone will get exactly the same amount of food. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now that's cooperation. That's, that's cooperation. Total. Incredible <laughs> cooperation. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing too, I totally agree that, you know, animals kind of really need to be seen as equal because guess what? There's no line between humans and animals that's really, uh, you know, total and absolute there's uh you know all the animals 
and us, we really are part of the same thing. And that's really pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's not because we've become so distant from our animal life. But uh, really, it causes part of what's causing the tower to fall in terms of the national health of, of this country and some others is, um, you know, is like a, a de 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 degradation of the inner ecology. And the reason the inner ecology is, is uh, you know, degrading and falling apart, the tower is falling inside us, is that for so long we've divided ourselves from the other natural beings. And again, I uh, have problems with the word nature because it's no, there's no word for nature in almost any uh, Native American language that I'm familiar with. It's just a crazy concept. You know, I, I learned that from this Dr. Shiva online, 30,000 uh, artificial chemicals are now in these libraries in the United States and they're non-organic and they are man-made, but also derived from in mother earth, right? But they are not natural, they're not organic. And so I talk about the natural world, instead of using the word nature, I use like the earth um, light matrix and that it's a spiritual realm and it's not disconnected. It's We're part of it completely. It goes through us. There are thousands of, of viruses inside of us that are perfectly okay. And if it all gets out of balance, then, then we're vulnerable and the tower falls down. Right. Yeah. That balance, that um, systems that are so fragile that when consumers consuming too much. I think that was one of the illustrations you were making in the uh, one of the building towers of, mm -hmm. you know, extracting too much and then, you know, the crushing <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, of the foundation, you know, so how do we, I, you know, I, I love that as a, a teaching tool. Mm -hmm. um, well, my, when my son had his art party, that when the tower fell, they revealed that somebody had painted the, the central block at the bottom level, because there's three on each level, and the central block was painted as an American flag in uh, 3D, you know, on all six sides, it was an American uh -huh. flag. Uh -huh. And then, and it was safe, it was okay. So I'm taking that as being maybe hopeful that the country will survive even if the tower falls down, and um, I think that's reasonable. I hope it's reasonable. But, you know, it's not to be taken for granted. There are some grave dangers. If you just think about, you know, uh, if you put a monkey in a cage that has a nuclear button in the cage, then that's kind of risky. Let me put it that. That's all I want to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you have this concept that we're stretching this web of life. Right. And, uh, you know, can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, it's like all these uh, solutions that, you know, quick fix solutions we come up with. Um, they don't always break the web of life and things continue and people continue to live. But over time, it it's stretching uh, the web of life to the breaking point because the web of life is actually, you know, really complex if you try to pull it apart, but it's very simple <clears throat> if you just live in it. And for example, a simple native indigenous lifestyle is going to be in harmony with that web because we're part of it. We're made of it. Everything we are is, is part of that. And the more that we separate ourselves from that through like, for example, the compounds uh, that are non-organic, the 30,000 of them and uh, the concepts we develop that are not, uh, sustainable and talk about you know i talk about oil pipelines and whatnot and it's like the pipelines okay so we might have a leak and that might harm the rivers and that's tragic but if you look at the bigger picture where is all those pipelines really leading us as a planet well it's not good it's a very crazy picture and it's each time you know put in one of these things yeah it might not harm that river for a few you know 10 minutes a decade uh but over time, it's stretching, it's putting us at more and more risk, for one thing, the risks keep going up. And uh, so that's part of the stretching. But also, it's our immune systems, both spiritually and physically, 
is that we have a kind of a spiritual immune system, which is our own natural ability to bounce back from tragedy and trauma, which most children do have. And I wrote a book called Acorn Boy, which I'm not sure you've read, but it's a children's book where this little boy is really just an acorn. And he has no arms or legs and he has no brains at all, but he trusts in the process and he does okay. You know, water takes him where he needs and we, and he's buoyant. And we have that when we're born, a kind of a buoyancy and we bounce back. Well, as we're going along in an artificial spiritual environment that has no real spiritual sustenance, uh, we get run down. And so, you know, it's harder to bounce back from, from trauma. And that's what's happening to some people too. And that's just as serious as a uh, plague. And so it, it does happen and psychologists have pulled that apart and figured out why that goes wrong. So there are people that become their, what I say is their hearts become like glass and, you know, really very beautiful people, but more and more over time, they would tend to isolate themselves. So let's say we want, um, you know, hearts that are not made of stone or glass, right? Mm -hmm. We want hearts that, that beat together, see? And so that's a spiritual part of it. And that, uh, you know, that's where the stretching, using wrong solutions, you know, eventually you, your heart breaks. And they say when your heart breaks, it's actually good because then everything opens up. I guess that's true. But on a, on a uh, other level, on a physical level, we're always stretching uh, everything by uh, the, you know, artificial foods, which have so much sugar in it. And I want to read this 